Today I'll be giving a presentation on the overview of the field of medical dosimetry. The main questions that I'll be covering are what is a medical dosimetrist, how much do medical dosimetrists make, and how do I become a medical dosimetrist. So as an introduction, the founders of Dosepedia are credentialed medical dosimetrists, CMDs, working in US-based institutions. And from this presentation, you can expect to gain a general overview about everything medical dosimetry, again, which includes salary, career outlook, the credentialing process, resources, etc. What is a medical dosimetrist? You can find more specific and detailed answers on the internet, but informally speaking, a medical dosimetrist is someone who designs treatment plans for radiation therapy to kill cancer cells, and we use a dedicated computer program to create our plans. Such a program shows patients in three dimensions and allow us to position radiation beams around them, which will be pinpointed at the cancerous region. And this cancerous region is defined by the medical doctor. And our other responsibilities tend to revolve around this central theme, which is treatment planning. How much do medical dosimetrists make? Your best resource here will be the AAMD, who release salary survey reports every year. However, this is locked behind their membership, but you could purchase a copy without a membership using the following link, but the price I think is quite hefty, but if this is a field you're seriously considering, it may be worth the cost. My personal prediction, based off my own experience in the job market, stuff that I've heard from coworkers and information through the grapevine, is that US-based dosimetrists make anywhere between 80 to 150K annually, which will depend on your location, level of experience, and the institution itself. How is the career outlook for medical dosimetry? There are two general arguments for avoiding the field. I'd like to discuss the reasons for avoiding as opposed to reasons for going into because I think that may be more valuable for the audience. The first reason being if the cure for cancer is found and the second being the onset of automation. I can't speak for a pill in the future that may cure all cancer, but at least in our present, we need to consider cancer as a generalized umbrella term. Cancer has many different types and have different treatment modalities. You can't really lump them into the same word, really, as weird as that sounds. Um, but if that's something you're concerned about, you can probably ask around. As for automation, it's very evident that our responsibilities are becoming more automated. However, a lot of these tasks which are becoming automated still require human intervention. Most of the times when new scenarios occur, humans are very much required. Um, we'll need to make manual modifications to whatever it is the computer is trying to automate. Candidates will be limited geographically depending on whether a radiation oncology clinic is in the area. So unlike professions such as nursing, dosimetrists are more limited in terms of which location they can work in. However, with our recent global event, it's likely triggered clinics to consider more remote-based work arrangements. Even at the clinic I work now, we've already heard some information on how we'll be able to work from home more often after this event has passed. Furthermore, given the relatively small number of JR Start accredited programs, which are the programs students should be graduating from, otherwise they will not be able to sit for their dosimetry board exams, candidates willing to relocate should find a job without significant difficulty. So in other words, because there's kind of a bottleneck in terms of new graduates, it makes it easier for graduates to find a job or even those willing to change jobs as well. So how do you become a medical dosimetrist? You have to graduate from, as I've just discussed before, a JR cert accredited medical dosimetry program. And you will also have to become credentialed. Um, and the title for that is a CMD, Certified Medical Dosimetrist, by passing the board exam administered by the MDCB. Certain US institutions will hire candidates without board certification initially, but eventually they'll expect them to become certified within a certain time frame. Here you have some links you can refer to. This first one here is a very important one. It'll help you search for JR Cert accredited programs within the US, I believe. Um, these other ones here, for example, will show you what the standards for a JR Cert accredited program is. The next one here will give you curriculum guidelines. And the last one will give you the requirements to sit for the credential exam, 
which will require you to graduate from a GR cert accredited program. Lastly, who might be a good fit for medical dosimetry? Now, this is more of my own subjective opinion. However, I think many people may agree with what I have to say. The first one is if you're an open-minded individual and you're willing to learn. Our field is continually evolving and will be required to implement new technology and techniques into our current workflow. And it'll be helpful if you're someone who's accepting of that change, who's willing to challenge their own, uh, their framework, and to continue to grow really. Secondly, someone who's a good communicator. It's not just that we're working alone, but we have a team and we're continually talking with doctors and with the radiation therapists who deliver the treatment. It's important that everyone within the team is aware of the treatment plan. If there are any special considerations, it needs to be communicated specifically and clearly. And no matter where you work, this will be a very uh, important skill to have. Next, we have an individual who is relatively independent. As much as we work in a healthcare team, a lot of the work we do on our own is done independently. That is, we're working on our plans by ourselves. Whenever we encounter problems that require troubleshooting, it'll go through us first. And there are a lot of moments like that. We're also responsible for taking the initiative to reach out to more senior members. And that requires us to be uh, independent in the sense that we've made the decision to reach out to people as opposed to having other people check up on us. So um, that's also a useful skill to have. Another thing is someone who is strong in cost benefit analysis. With radiation treatment as a whole, it's there are pros and cons. However, the pros outweigh the cons significantly. In other words, we're giving radiation to the patient, which is in a high amount. And typically that's that would be a very unhealthy amount if it wasn't for the fact that we were treating cancer. The normal organs will be receiving a good amount of radiation dose as well, but we've made the assessment that it's worth to give that amount of radiation to the normal organs in order to deliver a high amount to the cancerous region, which will result in the patient ideally surviving. So that's more of like the macro perspective of cost benefit analysis, but in every decision we make, the way we position our, our radiation beams, um, the way we approach the plan, it will all require some micro level of cost benefit analysis. And to build off that is to have um, critical thought. After you've made a list of your pros and cons, you have to be able to make the most correct decision based, based upon that. Not only that, we always encounter new scenarios which have never been accounted for in the clinic. In other words, there isn't a precedent set set and we'll have to be making decisions sort of on the fly and these two points in tandem will help you make will help make you a strong medical dosimetrist these are more of like extra traits which may be good um, but nonetheless these are are stuff which could be valuable lastly to be strong in spatial visualization we're viewing the patients in three dimensions on our computer program and it will be helpful if you can visualize how that looks like when the patient is actually at the treatment machine. That can help you with um, just overall understanding and solving problems at the machine if they occur. All right, and that ends our presentation for today. Thank you for listening. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out on the Dosepedia website. And bye now.